Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Michelle from Skoblicky Scientists, and I'm here with you today for an exciting lesson on, you guessed it, flowers. How many of you love to grow flowers? I know I certainly do, and today we're going to explore some interesting facts all about flowers. So let's get started. So I have a question, friends. If I want to grow some flowers, what do I need to do? Do you know? Hmm, I know that a flower has a life cycle. Can you say that? Life cycle, great job. Can you think of anything else that has a life cycle? If you said a butterfly or a frog, you're right. So let's explore the life cycle of the flower. Now if I want to grow a flower, friends, who knows what's the very first thing I'm going to need. If you said a tiny seed, you got it. Can everyone out there say seed? Now what else am I going to need to do if I want to grow this into a flower? Can I just put it in my pocket and really hope that I grow a flower? Mm -mm. What do I need to do with this seed, friends? If you said I need to plant it, in some soil, you're exactly right. So the next thing we need, if we want to grow a tiny seed, is we need to get some soil. Now we can plant it outside in the ground, or we can put it into a pot. Now do I just take my seed and place it on the surface just like that up top? Mm -mm. I need to dig a hole, right? Everyone out there, pretend to dig with me. Okay, let's all dig our hole and let's place our seed in the soil. Now we know we need to dig a hole and cover it up with the soil. Does anyone know why we can't just leave our seed sitting right on top of the soil? That's right, if you see a squirrel or a chipmunk or a bird, they might swoop down and take our seed and that's the end of our flowers. So we need to take our tiny seed and plant it under the ground in some soil and cover it back up again. And now that I have my seed and I have my soil, what else does it need in order to grow? Did you say water? Great job! We need to make sure to give our seed plenty of water. So whether we're watering it from the hose or watering can, or even if it's getting plenty of water from the rain, that's going to help our seed to grow. Hmm, so now we've got plenty of air and soil and water, and I wonder what else we need. If I were growing this in a pot, could I just put it in the back of my dark closet, close the door? Mm-mm. It needs something else. If you said the sun, thumbs up. We need plenty of warm sunshine in order for our seed to grow. So if we have a garden outside, we need to make sure it gets plenty of sunlight. Or if we're growing our seed in the house, we need to put it by a sunny window. Let's take a look at what happens next on the journey of our tiny seed. So once we plant our seed under the ground, friends, we can see that it needs soil and air and water and sun. Now this tiny seed is protected by something super special. And that special covering on our tiny seed is called a seed coat. Friends, can you say seed coat? Well, the seed coat is what protects the little embryo inside. And when that seed coat finally breaks open, the roots will grow out. Everyone at home, put on your seed coat with me. Now break it open. Great job. So we have a tiny seed coat. Now as our seed begins to grow, as we said, it's going to sprout something once that seed coat breaks open. Do you remember what I said will grow next? If you said the roots, you got it. So we're going to see some tiny roots grow down under the ground, friends. And this process, when the seed is starting to grow, is a big science word called germination. K 
Can you say that, friends? Germination. Excellent job. Now, once that seed breaks open, it's going to grow the roots. Can you say that? We know that the roots grow under the ground. They're going to anchor the plant, and they're going to suck up the water and the nutrients for the plant with its tiny root hairs. Next, take a look at what's happening here. <gasps> look what's happened. Can you notice what's growing? It's now starting to grow above the ground. And it's doing something we call sprouting. Can you say sprouting? And do you see this part of the plant, friends? That's something new. We know that it grew the roots under the ground, but above the ground, there's a new part that we see. And this part, friends, is called the stem. Can you say stem? The stem is like a big pipe through which the water is absorbed from the soil and passed up through the plant, through the roots. And now, take a look at what's happening at this stage of the life cycle. This plant is really growing. And besides the stem, I see something new growing on the plant. Do you see it too, friends? If you said it's grown lots of beautiful green leaves, you're right. This part of the plant that's now grown, this part is called the leaves of the plant. Can you say leaves? The leaves of the plant are so important. Do you guys know why? Well, the leaves of the plant actually make the food for the plant. Because plants can create their own food through a big science word. Are you ready to clap it with me? It's called photosynthesis. Excellent job. So again, photosynthesis is the way that plants create their own food in their leaves. And now for our favorite part of the plant. Do you know what these are called? That's right, these are flowers. So this part of the plant is called the flower. And the flower is really important because it does a few different things. First of all, you'll see that it has beautiful, colorful petals on it. And those colorful petals attract bees and butterflies and other things that we call pollinators. And pollinators help to create a process called pollination. Can you say that, friends? Pollination. And what happens during pollination is our friends, the bumblebees and the butterflies, they fly around to the flowers. And our pollinator friends will land on the flower in order to eat the nectar. Inside of each of the flowers, there's something called pollen. Can you say pollen? Sometimes pollen makes us sneeze, and we may have allergies to pollen. But what happens is, when my friend the bee gets very hungry, he'll land onto the flower to drink some nectar. Now when he lands on the flower, he gets the sticky pollen, that dust on his feet. And as he flies from flower to flower, he spreads that pollen. And he's able to help more new flowers grow. So that process is called pollination. And bees are, you got it, pollinators, just like our friends the butterflies. Boys and girls, sometimes seeds can spread by the wind. When the wind blows the seeds, they can spread from different areas. Do you think that birds and squirrels might also drop seeds and spread them too? That's right, animals are carriers too. Sometimes seeds can also land on the water and get um, traveling down the stream to a new place. And do you know that you can even spread seeds, friends? When you're walking around in the backyard, sometimes they can get stuck to your shoe and you can help transport seeds for new flowers too. 
I've had so much fun learning about our flower basics together. And now, when I come back, it's time for our flower lab, friends. I'll see you in a few. Hi, boys and girls. I am back, and it's time for our hands-on fun with flowers. Now, if you happen to have a flower that you had out in your garden, or maybe one that your grown-up brought home from the store, and you want to work on the flower lab with me, that is great. So if you happen to have a real flower and you want to go ahead and get it ready, uh, we will examine them together. Now if you don't have your own flower at home, it's perfectly fine and you can just follow along and watch Miss Michelle. Alright, so let's get started. Now I have two different types of flowers that I got from the store. All right, so we're going to take a look at the parts we talked about and the function of each part. Okay, so and we look at the flowers that I'm holding, friends, we can see that these do not have the roots attached. Remember, we said that the roots are the parts that grow under the ground. They're like ro long root hairs that go through the soil, and the roots would be the parts that draw all of the water and nutrients up from the soil when the plants are under the ground. Now, if you've gone ahead and picked your flower, or um, you've gotten one from the store that's been cut, you will notice that they do not contain the roots, right? But if you've ever been in your garden and been weeding, and you pull up a weed and you see all of those long root hairs hanging down, that's a good way to identify the roots, right, friends? So again, we're starting from the bottom of our plant, and we'll notice that these do not have roots, okay? But if we start to travel up, and I'm just going to use this guy for our example. What do we call this long green part right here that looks sort of like a pipe? Does anyone remember what this part is called? Yeah, this part is the stem. Can you guys say stem? Now, if you have your plant at home, can you find your stem? Feel it. How does it feel? Now, I know my stem is pretty thick, and it's hard. You see that? It's a long, it feels like a tube. And I know that all of the water and food and nutrients that's coming from the soil travel up my stem. Do you see that? It's like a pathway, like a big straw, and it's sucking up all of the water and the nutrients. And again, my stem is thick, and it holds the plant up. It sort of anchors my plant. It keeps it nice and sturdy. So this stem is real important. All right, so we know the roots would be under the ground, and then above the ground we find the stem, and oh my goodness, what are these? Who can tell Miss Michelle? What are these long green things that are growing here? Now if you look carefully at them, you will notice that these are the leaves. Okay? Now if you feel the leaves, if you have a flower at home, friends, what do you notice? These are much softer, right, than the stem, much more pliable. You could see if you look real closely that there are these veins in the leaves. And that helps it to transport all of the things it needs in order to create the food for the plant. So if you look closely, the leaves are where photosynthesis occurs. Real important for our flower, right? So it's producing all of the food it needs in the leaves. And I'm just going to show you my other flower because the leaves actually look quite different on this one. Look at that, right? They're a different color and they're a different shape. The edges of the leaves are different. But again, we can really see those veins in the leaves and you could see that's like helping it to transport the nutrients that it's going to need in order to create food for the plant. And it's not going to be able to do that without sunlight, of course, right? And as we travel up from the leaves, now we've got our favorite part, the flower. Can you guys identify the flower on your plant at home? What color are my petals? These are the petals, right? That's right, mine are yellow. And now everyone feel your petals, they're super soft, right? They're not hard like the stem. And again, the petals are used to attract 
pollinators. So the bees and butterflies are going to really love this bright yellow color. Now here's the part that's fun in science. We can go ahead and remove a couple of those petals. Can you take some off and, and feel them? And the more you remove, you can get a better look at the inside, friends, of my flower. Now this is the part that we talked about. Inside in the center of the flower, we're going to find that delicious nectar that the bees and butterflies come to eat. And again in here, we're going to find all of the pollen. And the pollen is that sticky dust that sticks to the feet of the insect and helps to grow new plants. All right, so take a look in the center of your flowers, friends, and see if you could find where the nectar is. I'm gonna take my other flower here. And again, there are different color petals. These are sort of a purple and pink. But if you look inside, look at that. Oh my goodness. These have a different shape to them, but they're each containing that uh, pollen that we talked about. And it's right in the center of our flower. So we have done an excellent job identifying all of the parts of our flower and the important role that they play in pollination. All right, friends, and when we come back in just a minute, it's time to create our flower craft. Hi, friends, I'm back, and I'm so excited to create our flower craft today. So um, before we get started, I'm just going to go over some of the simple supplies you're going to need if you'd like to create some flowers with me. All right, so what you're going to need is a sheet of construction paper for your project. I chose blue because I like to have a nice blue background, but again, you can choose your favorite color for your project sheet. You are also going to need a sheet of green construction paper, and the green is going to be used to create our stem and our leaves for our flowers today. I'm also going to need you to get a piece of pink construction paper because we're going to be creating a little vase for our flowers using this pink construction paper. We are going to also need some cupcake wrappers, friends. If you like to bake at home and you have different color cupcake wrappers um, at home, we're going to need three of those, okay? So if you can go into the kitchen and ask your grown-up for three different colored cupcake wrappers, that would be great. And you're also going to need some tiny buttons, like the little buttons you might find on your shirt. We're just going to need a few small buttons for our project today. So once you have that, you're also going to need a glue stick or some school glue to adhere all of your pieces today. You are going to need a black marker and you will also need a safety scissor in order to cut out all of your pieces. So once you have all of your supplies ready at the table, I think we're ready to get started, friends. So I want you to grab that sheet of construction paper that you chose to create your project on. And I'm going to be using blue, but maybe your favorite color is purple or yellow. So whichever one you're working on, go ahead and grab that sheet with me now. All right. So for step number one, friends, what we're going to do is we're going to take those cupcake wrappers. And I chose green and purple and teal. These are my favorite colors. And what you're going to do is if you can take your cupcake wrapper, you want the colorful side to be showing. So the white is where we're going to glue it. So that colorful side is going to show like this. You're going to have that frilly edge all fanned out and you're going to be using the flat part to glue to your paper. Now, I kind of went ahead and did this to model for you. If you have those colorful buttons, I have some purple buttons, I took my glue, friends, I just took my school glue, and I rubbed it right in the center, friends, right in the center of my cupcake wrapper, and then I took, I chose about three buttons to represent my pollen, okay? And what I did is I put some glue, and I really, really pressed down, just pressed down to get those buttons to stick, in the center of my flower petals. 
So what we've created is our flower with the very colorful petals and the inside we used our buttons to represent our pollen because we know when our bees come over to take some nectar they're going to be getting some pollen on their their little feet so we want to put that into our flower models so you can do that for each so I put some buttons in my green flower and I put some buttons in my purple flower so you can go ahead and do that right now friends glue I would say about two or three buttons inside of each of your cupcake wrappers to show your pollen. Okay? So you can do that. And once you're done with that, we are going to take our sheet of green, friends. Go ahead and find your green and your safety scissor. And we're going to create some stems. Now if we have three flowers, how many stems do we need? That's right, three stems. So what you're going to do is you're just going to cut real thin strips in your green construction paper. Again, you're going to need three. And once you're done and you cut them, you're going to have a stem that looks like this. So it's like a long, thin rectangle, right friends? All right, and you're going to need three of these for your stems. And once you have all three cut out, you can take your three stems and put them on the side. And now, using that same green construction paper and your safety scissor, I decided I wanted to cut out a few leaves because I know my flowers are going to get hungry and they're going to need the leaves to make food for the plant. So what I did with these is I kind of used a teardrop shape in my green and I just made a few shapes for my leaves. I made about three. You can make however many you'd like. And once you've cut those, you can take those and also put them on the side with your stems. Now, we are going to need something to put our flowers in because we know that our flowers are going to need some water, right? So I use my pink construction paper and I just cut out a little vase for all of my flowers. So you can use whatever shape you'd like and just cut out something that looks like a vase and that we're going to be gluing down onto our paper in just a sec. All right, so now I think we're ready to put all the pieces together, friends. What do you think? So I'm going to start by taking my sheet and you can do this along with me, friends, while I'm working. I'm going to take my stems, my three stems, and I'm going to glue them now with my handy glue stick onto my project sheet. And you guys can be doing this right along with me, okay? So I've got one, and I want to make sure I use a lot of glue, and I really press these stems down. Make sure you get them on there good. All right, so once I get my stems on there, I'm then going to take my colorful petals and I'm going to glue them up top. And press them down. Hold them there for a few seconds so that they stick. Again, a lot of glue. Doing a great job out there, boys and girls. These are looking amazing. All right, so now we've created our flowers, our petals with our pollen inside and our stem. And now we're just gonna take a couple of those leaves we made, rub some glue and add some leaves onto our flowers. Because we certainly want to be able to make our own food. So we need some leaves. All right, and once you've gotten all those leaves on, you can go ahead and take that flower pot and we're going to put plenty of glue onto the base of our flower pot. Rub, rub, rub out there and take it, press it down right here so that all our stems are now inside of the vase because we know that there'll be plenty of water for them to drink in there. Looking beautiful. 
Amazing job. And now it's time for our black marker friends. So I like to add a little detail to my leaves. When we looked closely at the leaves, we knew they had some veins. So I'm just gonna draw some lines in my leaves to make some veins in my leaves. I'm just drawing a line down the center and some little lines coming off to add a little more detail to my flowers. And then I know a lot of you um, were hoping to give a special gift to a special lady, maybe a special mom or grandma or aunt. So if you'd like to make this picture for a special lady, flowers for a special lady, you can write their name right in the center of your vase and it looks amazing and again you can write whoever you want to give these flowers to in here or maybe even a very special teacher all right and so when you're done friends here it is your beautiful flower craft and they look absolutely amazing and colorful and the best part is if you forget to water them they will still look incredible all right, friends, as always, you've done an amazing job learning all about flowers with me today. Until next time, friends, keep learning and keep smiling, everybody.